Welcome. This video will explore S4 HANA settlement management from a procurement perspective. We will see how we can use a condition contract to secure the collection and the correct calculation of purchase rebates. Let us begin by looking at some of the benefits of using a vendor rebate condition contract. A condition contract allows you to store all contract conditions in one central document. It secures proper accrual and calculation of negotiated rebates and deductions. You can simplify the collection and settlement of vendor discounts, kickbacks and bonuses. Settlement management functionality supports all types of settlement processes, not limited to core business processes such as our procure-to-pay scenario. The condition contract is an essential part of settlement management. The condition contract provides a central, standardized solution for the administration of supplier and customer conditions. Condition contracts support single or multiple suppliers or customers. Condition contract supports different types of settlements defined in the settlement calendar. Settlement and accrual conditions are created independently in the condition contract. Accruals can be posted during invoicing or as a single document on Delta accrual. In a procure-to-pay scenario, business documents such as purchase orders, goods receipts, and supplier invoices represent the data source needed to create accruals and settlements. The required documents are defined in each condition contract. Based on the settlement calendar in the condition contract, settlement runs generate settlement documents. They form the basis for financial postings in the general ledger and accounts receivables. We will now take a closer look, through a simplified example. First, we will create and maintain a condition contract. Second, we will create one purchase order, perform one goods receipt and register the subsequent supplier invoice. We will then perform a settlement run. Finally, we will look at the result of the settlement run, including a credit memo. We begin by opening the Monitor Supplier Condition Contracts app. The app gives us an overview of existing condition contracts. We can also use it to create new contracts. With one of our suppliers, we have agreed that we, for a limited period, will receive a 2% discount, to be settled separately, for all purchases of materials belonging to a specific material group. To reflect the 2% discount, we need to add two conditions, one condition for the accruals to be collected later and another for the supplier rebate itself. They are both set to be a percentage of the value of the purchased goods. The price on the purchase order itself will have a zero effect, but an accrual is made for the 2%, as we will see later. We also need to indicate which purchasing organization the condition contract is valid for. We then add business volume selection criteria. This determines for which purchase orders we will be rewarded the agreed discount. We add two criteria, first, the supplier criteria, then the material group criteria. Both requirements must be met for us to qualify. Please note that we may include a different supplier in the criteria list than the supplier responsible for the contract. For instance, if a local supplier's rebate is offered by its parent company. Before we save, we need to determine the settlement calendar. Even though this contract has a short duration, we create one date for partial and one for final settlement. After final settlement, the contract will be deactivated and no longer used. We release the condition contract, then press the save button. With an active condition contract in place, we move on by opening the Manage Purchase Orders app. The app gives us an overview of existing purchase orders, however, we create a new one. We raise the purchase order with a previously used supplier, for the relevant purchasing organization and with a quantity of a material belonging to a rebate qualifying material group. We move to the item details and look at the pricing. We can see that our two conditions from the condition contract are included however, creating a zero effect on this order. We finalize the order by applying the defaulted tax code and pressing the Create button. We use the Post Goods Receipt for Purchasing Document app to do the goods receipt needed for the supplier invoice to be approved. We key in the purchase order number, then the storage location, before posting the goods receipt. With goods receipt done, we use the Create Supplier Invoice app to register and control the supplier invoice. 
The supplier invoice is required to claim the rebate since this was indicated through the condition contract document type. We enter the purchase order number, the same as before. Next, the system fetches information about the received goods and their expected value. Finally, we enter the invoice sum and recognize that the invoice balances. We press the check button, then post the invoice. We should expect more than just one purchase order for condition contract to make sense in real life. However, one is all we need to create a partial settlement. For this, we use the Settle Condition Contracts app. We enter posting and document date, choose partial settlement and make it a live run before pressing the execute button. One contract settlement document has been created. In a minute, we will look closer at the document with reference 249. We make a quick revisit to the Monitor Supplier Condition Contracts app. At the top of the list, we find our condition contract. Following the link, we press go in the subsequent selection screen. We click on the more details button. We can see that a credit memo, 249, was created during our partial settlement run. By selecting it before pressing accounting, we see the detailed postings in the accounting document. These postings will ensure that we get our agreed rebate paid out. Before we end, let's recap some of the benefits of using a vendor rebate condition contract. A condition contract allows you to store all contract conditions in one central document. It secures proper accrual and calculation of negotiated rebates and deductions. You can simplify the collection and settlement of vendor discounts, kickbacks and bonuses. The views, information or opinions expressed are solely those of the individuals involved and not those of the individual's employer or any other group or individual. Thanks a lot for watching. Please comment, like and subscribe. More videos like this are coming shortly. See you then.